Oh my God, everyone. Hey, what's going on? I did it again. I forgot to hit the record button. I swear. So I was just a few minutes in just letting everyone know that I'm okay. I'm out here. I just have been dealing with uh, medical issues and my child's medical issues and then really bad depression, which is like why I started the whole channel was like I was motivated. I wanted to help other people and let them know that other people feel the, feel the same way that they do. Like there's an empty hole in your heart or you feel alone or, you know, I'm a suicide survivor. Thank God that I am, but, or our higher power, but I've been going through this terribly, and I am, people are like, you are strong, well, I don't have any other choice to be, because I have to be here for my children, I, you know, I do not want to ever give up again, the pain at least shows me that I'm still alive, as far as, like, the emotional pain, the loneliness, it gets better. Like, I've decided, like, I'm not going to date. I'm not going to be in a relationship. I'm going to focus on myself and my children. <clears throat> you know, it's been a year and a month almost since Chad um, passed away in our home of a heart attack on the floor um, in my son's room. We slept in there last night. We still live here. Sometimes it comforts him, and it is actually really strange that it could, but it was the last place he was happy at, so and that has a lot to do with it, but I don't want to always be talking to you about <clears throat> being unhappy. Like, I still am smiling. Like, I'm trying. I'm going on. Every moment we take for granted, someone else would love to have those moments, those minutes. They know their life's on a countdown, and we all know that, but we take it for granted. Like, I have wasted so much time, and I'm not going to do that anymore. Like, as ever hard that it may be, you have to force yourself and make yourself do the things, even if you're, like, in autopilot and you, you know, have to make yourself get up and do things and smile if you have to take it second by second that is what i've been having to do i don't use drugs or alcohol i have a couple of prescription drugs but i have a lot of endocrine disorders <laughs> you don't ever just have one they're all connected really so you know pituitary gland or <clears throat> um adrenal gland or thyroid those are all, and your your ovaries, well, basically like your sexual organs, ovaries, and those are all like basically connected. Um, that's technically not part of the endocrine system. It's part of the reproductive system, but you get what I'm saying. Like the, all of these things, you know, my thyroid doesn't work, so my adrenal glands doesn't work, so my body is in hyperdrive all the time. So I eat healthy, I exercise, and I still gain weight. My feet have grown three sizes. I wear a size 11 shoe. I have gone through a lot. My face, my features have changed since I was younger. Like, I'm going to have to get some pictures on here and show you. Like, I can actually tell, you know, parts of my and my face structure has changed. And I'm not talking about like the normal aging process. So every second that I have is a blessing. It, things go wrong over and over and over. And it seems like it's a test. So how you react to it. If you react very dramatic and panic and freak out. Then you break yourself down further and further where... When these daily things happen that happen to all of us, car breaks down, we, you know, get our wallets or purse stolen, um, something health scare or somebody ha something happens to someone that we love, um, 
you know, issues like that, workplace drama, it's all so petty when it comes down to it. We have to just be in the moment with that person. So I've been doing that with my sons. I haven't, my older son has not been here for two weeks. He has been his dad's because there's so much going on with my younger son. He can concentrate better and do his schoolwork. And he is less anxious to be over there. So I want him to be happy, even though he knows how I feel about it. Um, I... You know, I can't put myself out there a whole lot to help other people right now as far as, like, being a friend or, you know, um, I'm working on right now making sure I keep all my appointments and my son's appointments because those are really important and thinking about actually going to therapy or counseling because I've never gone and addressed how I feel from coming home excited thinking I'm going to watch movies and cuddle with my son's dad that we had just got back together shortly before that and thinking what would we watch or what I could cook for supper and you know finding him passed away in his sleep <clears throat> you know and he had been gone for a really long time so I'd been at work all day <clears throat> and not checked on him I mean, I couldn't have really come home. I texted him, but I just figured he was sleeping or his phone was dead. Like, I have not addressed that, those issues. I've just kind of, like, grieved him as a person. Like, his pain is gone, so I should be happy for that. But my pain is still here. My son's pain. I have days where I'm angry. Like, why did you have to leave us? But I know that he didn't really choose to leave us. He had an addiction to drugs, to methamphetamine, but he was sober when he passed away. His body was too weak. His body was shutting down and he had signed himself out of the hospital against medical advice and not told me. So, so much that I wish I had known, wish I had said, wish I had acted differently. You know, I wish I hadn't been mad about it. I'm mad about his drug use and, you know, arguing with him about it. I tried to be supportive. He went to rehab and I was there for him and I tried to continue to be um to be there for him. And that was kind of strange. His mom just texted me on the phone. So we me and her still keep in touch. Um, you know, my son loves her, but the rest of the family is still grieving and I'm not going to talk about them because, you know, they're good people too. And everybody has a lot going on. This is about me. So I'm done talking about my work, what they did to me. They wronged me. Okay. So I deal with it. And, you know, I'm not, I know some of them think like that I, you know, I don't know if they think I'm really a bad person or like I scare them or they don't understand half of what I've been through and I'm lucky just to hold it together. You know, I, I miss working as a registered nurse. Like I did that for 10 years and well, I worked as a nurse for 10 years. Half of it was LPN and half of it was RN and I really enjoyed it. Like my patients and me had great rapport. I, love taking care of people. And that is why I was always there for my love once he did become addicted, because I knew that that wasn't really who he was. Like that drug will make you, um, a liar, a thief, you know, just somebody that you're not, because you have to have that fix like, you know, the air we breathe. He made me promise I would never try it. And I never will because I never want to experience that. I had a really bad alcohol problem, but somehow it's like a switch flipped inside of me. Well, I got pregnant with my youngest son for, for one thing. 
and so I stopped drinking and I drank twice and he's about to be four since he's been born and just bad experiences. I felt guilt. I felt I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy any of it. The taste of it, the memories that it brings back to me. I mean, we probably had so much fun at the bar when I first met Chad. First two years of our relationship, I had just got divorced. And so went to the bar a lot. We had a lot of fun, but we had a lot of bad times too, because we both just never knew when to quit, basically. So my son saved my life. And I was really hoping that things would turn out differently. But I can't change the fact that they are the way they are. So I have to accept it. And that's like a huge step. Like you can't be like, oh my God, what if, you know, like I said, I feel bad. I didn't, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I say this? You can't even do that to yourself because you can't go back and change it. You have to accept it and you have to forgive yourself and you have to somehow heal yourself and learn how to li live with what has occurred in your life. You can't let it tear you apart. You can't stay angry about it. You, you know, you need to, if you need to talk about it with someone, you need to talk about it with someone, but you don't let people walk on you. But then again, there's a time where with like with my situation, the bullying that I endured was more than anyone should have to endure. And the daily, you know, I was sick to my stomach daily having to go to work. And I used to love my job. So I have to let that go. And that organization is, you know, they should be, they're a loss. They're at a loss of a great nurse as far as I can, you know, um, express it. So, you know, I don't hold grudges like people think, you know, there's a time and a place. There's certain things that are harder to let go than others, but those people are fleeting moments in my life. So for all the people that are here to stay and that do like to watch my channel, I mean, I have a world of experience. I just have to learn how to speak and get it out to you in a quick manner of all that has happened and how I've dealt with it. I started writing things down in a journal whenever my, my um, son's father first passed away. I got to maybe a couple, two months in and I just couldn't do it like anymore. It was too painful. I was writing down memories though for my son. So I have a scrapbook I've made of like all the cards, anything that, you know, he ever had in his possession, pictures. I'm working on that, but it's going to be a little bit still like I'm trying to do it because I try to have everything ready because you never know if you're going to be here tomorrow. So don't go away mad. You know, try not to start drama if possible. I mean, I'm still trying every day not to. But like I said, when people do treat you wrong, you feel like you need to speak your mind. Some of us, that's how we survive. You know, we don't really have much of a support system, a friend or two, a handful of friends, um, you know, maybe one good best friend, one or two good best friends, and you're lucky. So I just wanted to tell everyone that I am going to be here until God calls me home, and I'm going to try to make some very good videos for you. Uh, I'd like to do some, like, comedy skits. I'd like to do some, like, just talking, role playing, not always being so serious. Like, you know, I'm my son's telling me I'm bossy. Well, I was a manager in retail for 10 years. Then I became a, a nurse for 10 years. And then I have two children I'm a single mom of. And I was trying to rescue someone for 10 years almost. So, yeah, I'm bossy. <laughs> like, I have to be. If I'm not, then people will just walk over me. And that's happened a lot, too. I've let people take advantage of me. Sometimes I know it, and sometimes they don't know I know it. But I just wanted to come back and tell everyone that I'm 
doing okay. I appreciate your support of my channel. And it's a month in the works. I mean, I really not had the time I wanted to dedicate to it. But my children come first. Oh, oh you know, it's always that way. So it may not be the time for me to be successful on a YouTube channel, but I'm still going to try. I'm going to keep trying and keep trying. And if I have to crawl and, you know, on my knees to the end, I will. And I will not disappoint my children ever. So with that being said, I hope that you can get some motivation or some sort of peace from this video. And if you made it to the end, let me know in the comment section if you liked my video or not. Or if you'd rather just hear about like, you know, the miscellaneous um, days of Lou. I mean, I can talk about so many things, but I just feel like I have a lot to give still, a lot to offer. And I really care about people and everyone that comments or that I've talked to on YouTube has been very wonderful. I think I had like one or two negative comments, but it was on somebody else's profile and I just kind of ignore it because that's their opinion and they're entitled to it. So I'm not going to get angry at someone else's opinion because it's different than mine. So I try to kind of word things, you know, like I'm working on not telling people like you should do this and said, I find like this works good for me or as a nurse, a lot of my friends and family do not like me diagnosing them or being worried about their health. I'm learning to do that. If you live with a nurse or for friends with a nurse, you know what I'm talking about. Or you are a nurse, then you know what I'm talking about. You know, you get worried. You see people, you know, uh, gaining weight and having chest pain or, you know, uh, I don't know, just health problems. We'll have to talk about that another time. So money problems, you know, nothing is forever. It can be temporary. I mean, if you're in financial distress, there are places out there to get help. And I hate to say this, but there's always bankruptcy. Like, it is never worth the stress of, I say, live simple, and you won't have to worry as much if your income does get taken away suddenly for some reason. Just be prepared for anything. Um, all right, y'all. My rantings for for tonight, I may try to make another one on a different topic because I know I have one that I, I've made a what you call a bucket list, but I've changed the name with a friend of mine to a unicorn list because the bucket list actually comes from kind of a bad, um, you know, you kick the bucket basically, uh, you're on a bucket, it, you know, it's kind of, ha it has a gruesome um, source. It came from like a gruesome idea, if you think about it that way. So we're calling it the unicorn list. You can call it the dinosaur list, whatever you want to call it. You know, before the land of time, <laughs> I don't know. I love all of you out there. And I hope you can have a great night somehow. I'm sitting by myself with my puppy. And I just ate a cheeseburger. You know, I, I've been dieting for two weeks pretty hard, lost more weight. But tonight, I just am not worrying about anything. I'm happy in my own company. I don't need to have anyone else's um, right now. And I just hope you can get to that point, too. I know tomorrow may not be the same for me, and I may go back into depression, but. I'm going to fight harder every time, so don't think that I'll ever give up. Much love. Signing off, air control to Major Tom. Major Tom.